You're listening to the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast, episode number 12. And if you've ever had or currently have a tutor for your teen, or if you're thinking about getting one, or you've never used or considered getting one, then stay tuned because as well as giving you three things to look for in a great tutor. More importantly, I'm going to give you the critical question to know if your teen even needs one. I'm Katie Jones and with over 15 years in education as an award-winning high school teacher, international external examiner and as a study coach, I've helped thousands of students skyrocket their results and confidence And this podcast is where I share all my insights, tactics, and tips with you, the parent, so you can help your hardworking team get happy, smart, and successful in their study, and have you both enjoy the journey along the way. This is the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast. Hey, VIPs, how are you? I am doing fantastic. It's a beautiful day here and I'm just back from a long dog walk in the sunshine. One of the things I love most about living in Queensland is that winter usually feels like it lasts about like three weeks, but this year it's definitely been more like a solid three months. So I am just super happy to see the sun. I am not actually complaining. (laughs) I know there has been some crazy weather everywhere this year. We've had the floods in Australia, the heat wave in the UK and across Europe, And of course, coming from England, it used to be more like three weeks when it wasn't cold and wet. So winter sunshine is just something that I love. And so I'm super happy today. Let's get into today's episode all about tutors. Should you look into getting a tutor for your teen? Do they actually even need one? Will it make any difference? How do you find a good tutor? Do you already have a tutor and want to make sure that you're maximizing what your teen is getting out of the sessions? Or even if they don't have one and you have no intention of hiring one, stay with me because I'm also covering all the ways that may well be the perfect decision. Because this topic is something I often get questions about, and I know that many of my 10-week grade transformation students either have had tutors previously, or they use them currently, and I know that some find it really helpful, some haven't really gotten what they hoped for or wanted out of it, some have them for specific subjects, some have them just to help with their study in general, And some do continue with them alongside the 10-week grade transformation program. Some take a 10-week break from their tutoring while they commit their time, that hour per week, and their parent commits their dollars per week to getting the 10 WGT training done. And so... I'm going to use a specific parent email that I got a little while ago to base this discussion around so that that way I'm hoping you'll be able to make any relevant links between their situation and yours with your team. Okay, the email said, Hi Katie, I was wondering if I could get your input. We were thinking of getting an English tutor for my son as he's in year 11 and English is the subject he always struggles with the most. But now, after watching your webinar and getting your emails, I'm not sure if he needs a tutor or just better skills for his essays and writing. In your opinion, would a tutor be helpful and do you have any advice on how to select a good tutor? Okay. So it really comes down to one key question to figure out whether a tutor will be helpful for him or not. Here's what it really depends on. And this is the case for you, for anyone, no matter what subjects you're considering or where your teen is at in their study. You need to think about what your teen is really struggling with. Is it the subject content Or are they struggling with applying that content in the way that those essays or exam questions or assessments or tasks require? And this is not about whether tutoring is good or bad. I have done tutoring in my time. I have seen it work really well for certain students and I've seen students where it has not worked so well because this is about finding the weakest link and then strengthening it. So let's take a totally different example for a second. Let's say you wanted to improve your fitness. We might automatically think of signing up with a personal trainer in a gym. But 
if you're actually training for a marathon and you want to improve your endurance aerobic fitness, then being in a gym lifting weights is not really going to be the best type of training for you. You see, it just all depends. It depends on what aspects need improving and what sorts of events or tasks you want to perform well in. If you wanted to improve your strength and build muscle, going for a daily walk isn't really going to help you. And it's not that going for a walk is wrong or it can't help in some way, but low level aerobic exercise isn't going to be the way to build muscle and strength. In the case of this student and their English study and their assessments, if they are struggling to understand a text, whether that's a poem, a speech, a novel, a Shakespeare play, if they're not feeling confident in understanding the key concepts, the characterization or the themes, or they struggle to pick out and explain different language features and what they are and how they work, then yes, an English tutor would likely be beneficial to them. And the same goes for if it was any other subject. For example, if it was maths and they're struggling to understand the steps and the processes or the actual mathematical concepts and how to actually do the calculations and figure things out, then yes, I think it can be helpful to have a tutor to help your teen personally and specifically with the actual subject knowledge and their understanding of it. If they aren't keeping up with the content taught in their science lessons, or they feel left behind, or they're just not getting that subject content, like when I say getting, like they're just not getting it, it's not sinking in for them, they don't feel like they're understanding it, they don't feel confident in it, then a tutor could be a good way to deal with that. So let's talk for a moment what to look for in a tutor, in my opinion, how to select a high quality tutor for your team. Now, tutoring, unlike teaching, it's not regulated. Anyone can put up an ad and offer tutoring. Now, that can be a positive or a negative, depending on how you look at it. But here are my top three things that I would be looking for in a tutor for a high school team. Number one, they need to have a good rapport with your teen. It needs to be someone that they're going to be comfortable and happy working with so that they are confident in asking questions and talking things through. Now, this, of course, is going to make the sessions a lot more positive and enjoyable for your teen, but it's also essential for the tutor so that they can work at your teen's pace, identify any gaps in their knowledge and really make sure that they are personalizing everything for them, which is really what tutoring is all about, that personalization. The second thing, in my opinion, is that they need to be a qualified teacher because they need to have the skills to convey their knowledge to your teen in a way that helps your teen learn it, understand it, and be able to do things, use these things for themselves independently. Just because someone is great at a subject themselves does not necessarily mean that they are great at teaching it. They might be, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. Teaching teenagers is not the same as learning it yourself. I dare say you already know that. There's actually quite a nice link here because it's like that study success formula where we know that just because a student has lots of subject knowledge and understands the content please go back and listen to episode one if you have not heard me cover off on this formula. Just because they have that subject knowledge, they know the content, they are not necessarily skilled in being able to apply it in a way that then gets them the results that matches their level of subject knowledge. They need to be effective in both. And it is the same for a tutor. They need to be effective in both and it is the same for a tutor. They need to be knowledgeable in the subject themselves but they also need to be skilled. Their skill part is in the teaching of it to your teen so that your teen can take it on and do it independently. I often do see students just working on their homework tasks or just going through practice questions with their tutor. Not that there's anything necessarily inherently wrong with those tasks or with those things as such, but more in the way that they're being done. It's not quite that the tutor is doing it for them. Like I think we all just know that would be a big no-no, but more like doing it with them. And the problem with doing it together, or at least doing that the whole way through, we have like a system called gradual release in teaching. So yes, we might do it together to start with, but there are other steps that come through after that to get them doing it independently. If those extra steps are not there, 
it can mean that the student feels like they're getting it. But when it comes to doing it totally by themselves, especially when it comes to exams, of course, they actually find out the hard way that they're not skilled in doing it successfully when working completely independently. That's why really teaching your teen to do everything for themselves is different to doing questions with your teen or working on tasks with them. Now, Hold on to that point because we're going to link back to it in a minute. But before we do, the third thing that I would look for in a tutor is someone who has external assessment experience, has been an external exam marker for an exam board, is a scrutiny or writing panel member, or has experience with assessment or coursework moderation activities. And not just marking these things in school, but actually doing it externally for an exam board. So that these three things together mean that they not only know how to teach those concepts to your team, but they also know what's going to be required and expected of them. And they can help them work in a way that means that your team will be able to put their subject content that they're learning across in those assessments, assignments, exams, essays. And I will admit that this is probably more of a wish item than an essential because honestly, finding a tutor who does have that examiner experience will be tough. Coursework moderation is a little bit more common, but funnily enough, there are not that many teachers out there who put their hand up to do more marking or more exam work. So if you do find one that ticks all of these boxes, and if by the end of this episode, you also do think that a tutor is what your team needs, then you should basically snap their hand off if they also have that good rapport with your team. Because again, just like the study success formula. (laughs) That formula has so many layers or so many sort of ways we could returb it to align it. Even if the tutor has teaching and exam board experience, if your team just doesn't get along with them or doesn't feel comfortable asking them questions, then that partnership isn't going to be particularly effective. You really do have to have all of those things together. So at a minimum, a good relationship and have them as a qualified teacher. But really, if you want your teen to be able to get the results in exams and assessment that match their ability, that match all the subject knowledge they're going to be working on, then they also really do need to have exam board experience too. Because until I was four years into teaching and went and did that exam marker training for the first time with the AQA back in the UK, that was my first ever experience with working with external exam boards. And I really did not know how to help students perform in assessments and exams until I had that training. Okay, so those are the three things that I'd be looking for in a tutor. And that does actually bring us nicely back to that really important point that I want to share, which is to question, is the reason you're considering a tutor more down to them not understanding the subject content? Or is it that they're not getting the marks and grades you or they think they could be in their results? If it's the latter, and let's say for English, They do actually understand what's going on in the novels that they're studying. They do know what the language features are that they've been taught and they can identify the techniques that an author is using. But your teen just isn't great at, let's say, writing sophisticated yet succinct essays or how to confidently answer the extended response questions in an exam. Then they likely don't need more teaching or tutoring in the subject. What they need are the skills and strategies to be able to apply that knowledge. Learning more and more about the themes or the characters or identifying more and more symbolism or language features in the novel or the poem or writing more and more information in their feature article or whatever it is that they are studying, is not going to help them if they cannot put that across in the way that the task requires or the exam question or the essay question is asking. Instead, they need to understand how to break down the question and how to respond in a way that actually meets the marking criteria. How do they dissect the question and how do they relay their knowledge that they've already built in a way that responds appropriately and accurately and on target to that question? 
Which quotes or examples are the best ones to choose? How can they analyze them in detail without waffling or writing more than they need to and going way over time or way over the word count? And how can they structure their response in the most effective way? These are the sorts of skills and training that I deliver in the 10-week grade transformation program and that we apply and action and hone and develop through my next level coaching. And these are the types of things that they might be struggling with in any subject. In fact, one of my previous 10WGT students' mum, Linda, said at the end of the 10 weeks when I spoke to her, she said, I would have had to hire six different tutors to get these sorts of results. That was after Chelsea, her year 11 daughter, said that she could apply this training to everything. And then there was Beth, who was in year nine. She went from getting B's and C's to getting seven A's in her very next assignments and assessments and exams. It literally, this was her mum's words. She said it literally worked across every subject. So let's go through a couple of examples. In maths, they might be getting stumped or overwhelmed by the longer wordy questions. They might not be revising in the most effective ways or not making the most strategic choices over which questions to actually be practicing, spending their time on. In science, they might not be analyzing their data in enough detail or not directly relating it back to the research question clearly enough. That comes down to the three steps of analysis. It doesn't come down to collecting more and more data or learning more and more information from the textbook. In business studies, it might be that they aren't integrating their case studies well enough or synthesizing their research points thoroughly. They likely don't need more research. They need to analyze and evaluate the research they already have effectively. And remember, I'm not saying that the subject knowledge, the content, isn't important. Both the knowledge and the application are essential to success. And that is the key to deciding whether a tutor is the most effective way to boost your team's results and confidence. It's a case of figuring out which is the leakiest hole in your team's study bucket. That's how I like to think of it, that they're diligently trying to fill that bucket, but there are marks just leaking out of the bottom. I should probably do an episode on that, (laughs) the leaky holes in the study bucket. And actually, that's a very important point as well. So bonus third point here. If you've ever used a tutor before and you didn't really see the outcomes or the results that you'd hoped for or wanted, then maybe it was always that application part that was missing that needed to be filled. That was the missing piece of the puzzle. That was the leaky hole all along. And it was never about the subject content in the first place. So if you've been considering a tutor for your teen, wherever your teen is at, whatever subjects they're studying, whatever grades and goals they're going after, that's the key question you need to be digging deep on and talking with your teen about. Do they understand the subject content? Do they understand the concepts? Do they have a pretty good knowledge of the subject and the curriculum and what they're learning in class? Then if so, they likely need the skills to be able to apply it in order to get the grades and the results that they want and reflect that effort. And if it's a no, if they say, yeah, you know what, I'm, I'm just not getting X, Y, or Z that we're going through in class. If they're not really keeping up with their classwork or they're not able to take on board the information that's being taught, then yes, a subject tutor will likely be more beneficial for them. And if it's both, then be sure to leverage the subject-based work or tutoring that they're doing by also making sure that they have those skills of application in place. Okay, I hope that helps answer that question for anyone who's been considering either hiring a tutor, is using one, is wondering how they can maximize the results and benefits from it, or wanted some confirmation that, no, they don't actually need a subject tutor. They need to be working maybe on their skills and strategies instead. And in case you can tell, I love answering parent and student questions. So for the next three months, I'm going to dedicate one podcast episode per month to answering your questions. So if you or your teen have a question you'd love me to answer, something that could be short and simple or something much more detailed, please email them through to support at rocksolidstudy.com. Put podcast question in the subject line and I will answer you. Either your question will be selected for one of the monthly Q&A episodes or I will write back to you personally with an answer. Either way, I will 
answer it. So thank you for hanging out with me today. I look forward to receiving your questions. Have a fabulous week. I hope the sun is shining for you and I will see you back here on Tuesday for another episode of the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast. If you're ready to have your teen achieve their best possible results with less stress, then I want to invite you to enroll them in the 10-week grade transformation program, where they're going to learn the key concepts, skills, and strategies to catapult their performance in assessments and exams. It's risk-free. They either achieve bigger and better results with a whole lot more confidence in 10 weeks, or we refund you in full. Just head over to www.rocksolidstudy.com forward slash program and I'll see you there.